Good day everyone, my name is Michael Parillo from BS Cream 16 and for today's video, we will try to understand the 9 fallacy principles by Sir Robert Fields. So first, it says here to, to prevent crime and disorder as an alternative to their repression by military force and serving of legal punishments. So it says here that if we want to prevent the crime and disorder, we must give the equivalent punishment for the crime committed and to make sure that that people will not do the same thing we must give a severe punishment for a severe crime commission so second one is to recognize always that the power of the police to fulfill their functions and duties is dependent on public approval and their existence actions and behavior and their ability to secure and maintain public respect. The police must be a good example to the people for them to perform their duties and function effectively because if the people see them as a good person, they can easily command the people where they be, where they've been assigned. So number, number three, to recognize always that the secure and maintain the respect and approval of the public means also the securing of the willing cooperation of public in the task of securing observance of laws. So the, the police not only secure their good profile to the people, also they want to secure and to assure that the people will cooperate to observe and always follow the laws. And for the number four, to recognize always that the extent to which the cooperation of the public can be secured diminish proportionately a necessity of use of physical force and compulsion for achieving police objectives. So it says here that the goal of this principle is, is to make sure that to achieve the to achieve and pull, fully practice the police objectives is without using physical force so the these principles aiming that to that to practice and achieve the police objective we must not uh, we must not use physical force as a law enforcement enforcer so number 5 to seek and preserve public favor, not by pandering to public opinion, but by constantly demonstrating demonstrating absolute impartial services to law, in complete independence of policy and without regard to the justice or injustice of the substance of individual laws, by ready offering of an individual service and friendship to all members of public without regard to their wealth, on or social standing by ready experience or courtesy, friendly, good humor, and by ready offering of individuals, individual services in protecting and preserving life. So here, it's just stating that, uh, that the police must be equal in terms of enforcing the laws and, and the social standing and wealth of the people is doesn't matter. So number six, we have here to use physical force only when the exercise of persuasion and advice of warning is found to be insufficient to obtain to obtain public cooperation to extent necessary to secure observance of laws or to restore order, and to use only only the minimum degree of physical force which is necessary on any particular occasion for achieving a police objection objectives rather so here these principles allow the law enforcer to use force when the persuasion and the persuasion and the advice warning is not enough to achieve the police objectives but the physical force that been used of the police is just minimum degree of physical force to ensure that that the people will not 
will not get a fatal injuries so number seven we have here to maintain all times a relationship with the public that gives reality to historic tradition that the police are public and the public are the police the police being only members of the public who are paid to give full time attention and full time attention to duties which is incumbent incumbent on every citizens in the interest of the community welfare and existence here in number 7 it says here even we even we become a law enforcers and we cannot we cannot change that we are also considered as a part or a or a simple citizens of our nation and we must not treat the others inferior to us inferior to us we just enforce the law because we are given a power to enforce this and we must not abuse this power that been given to us so number eight to recognize always the use for strict adherence to police executive fun functions and to refrain from being seeming to assert the power of judiciary avenging individuals or the state and the authority authority tably judging judging guilt and punishing the guilty so here the power of the police is limited on catching and arresting the criminals and not to give punishment to criminals for the sake of avenging so number nine we have here to recognize always that the rest of police efficiency is absence of the crime and disorder and not the visible evidence of the police action in dealing with them so in the modern world um, we have uh, it says here that the effectiveness of the police power of the police will be based on the absences of the criminalities in the certain area if there is no criminality criminal activities in a certain area which mean um, the, the police is effectively doing their police objective so those are the nine principles of the of nine principles nine nine policing principle of sir robert fields thank you